I'm back here. I come up as a number one man. I see that my number one sector is clear. Now, instead of short stepping and then turning into the corner, I'm gonna take that extra pause to step a little bit further out. And as I rotate the corner, I'm on perfect balance as I come in and address the threat. Obi-Wan, what's going on? Our position's been compromised. Defensive positions should have at least one covered route that permits resupply, medevac, reinforcement, or withdrawal from the building. We need an evac in the South Tower. Roger that, sir. We're coming. South Tower. We're in the North. One covered route withdrawal from the building. At least one covered route. Covered route. Now this, as you see, is a sword. This is the weapon of a Jedi knife. It's not a delicate little piece which you just thrust at someone with nimble footwork. It's a lethal killing weapon. An elegant weapon for a more civilized age. So there's none of this business of just extending our arm like that, extending our arm, going forwards, going forwards, going backwards, doing this, doing that, doing this, doing that, or whatever it might be. You have to lunge, you have to spring, you have to go, ah, like that, or ah, like that. You've got to extend. Where do we begin? Probably holding the sword. First and foremost, again, you want your dominant hand up right underneath the quillions, offhand underneath it, again, not grabbing the pommel. So I can throw with just one hand because the pommel's there, like this. Welcome to the Pro's Guide to Close Combat. In today's lesson, you'll learn the basics of hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques. The first technique will teach you how to block and control a punch. The combat experience where somebody's trying to shoot at you and kill you makes you figure out real fast that you can't stand still and shoot back at people. You have to get small. You will instinctively get small as hell. But I teach basically going into a flow of changing levels from big standing to small in different positions. Bounding overwatch is used when contact with an enemy force is expected or when crossing a large open danger area. One fire team is always in an overwatch position, prepared to lay down a base of fire while the other fire team maneuvers. Are you going to get out there and check the survivors? Sir, sir, yes, sir. sir. The key to moving successfully involves selecting the best combination of movement formations and movement techniques for each situation. Before moving, you must first select the next spot to go to and the best possible route to that spot. You must search the terrain to your front for features that provide cover or concealment. 
The rush is selected when there is no cover or concealment along your route and or enemy fire allows brief exposure. Let's go! Go, go, go! I can't express enough how important it is, especially anywhere in maneuverability range for the enemy say it takes me getting in a good position where i'm relatively safe behind cover not exposing myself too much the combat experience where somebody's trying to shoot at you and kill you makes you figure out real fast that you can't stand still and shoot back at people you have to get small you will instinctively get small as hell As you can see, I'm kind of shuffling out into the into the threat area, and I'm, I wasn't really on balance. What I want to kind of accentuate in this particular movement is the footwork it takes to have an efficient and balanced turn. Many soldiers are sent to special training courses where they learn how to safely blow doors off their hinges using explosives that are secured to the outside of the door. So the squad enters the room and performs a task they've trained on a thousand times back in the States. Armored vehicle positions are selected and developed to obtain the best cover, concealment, observation, and fields of fire while retaining the vehicle's ability to move. To obtain the best cover, best cover.